Today's movie has been hailed as The Thing and Alien Underwater. And really, if that doesn't sell you on checking it out, nothing else I can say will. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling George Cosmatos' Cool the Thing and Aliens riff, Leviathan. Released in 1989, Leviathan had the misfortune of coming out in the same time span as The Abyss, Deep Star 6, and Lords of the Deep. With so many underwater movies hitting all at once, Leviathan sort of got lost in the shuffle. But it's high time for new generations to discover this one. It's intimately familiar to anyone who's seen The Thing and the Aliens films, but it's got a fantastic cast and is wildly entertaining despite the plot familiarity. But enough about that. Can Leviathan eat enough underwater miners to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons, Tactical Therapist, Daniel Valentin, and Greg Literal. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on some credits. <laughs> oh boy, we've got De Laurenti. This could be a disaster. A film by George P. Cosmatos. Cosmatos had quite the career. He directed this, Rambo First Blood Part II, Cobra, and a little film you might have heard of called Tombstone. Justice is coming to Tombstone. And a title card. Pretty solid compared to what we normally get on the show. Peter Weller? Robocop is in this movie? I hope he's water sealed and rust proofed. The ocean might be hard on a robot cop. Whoa, Richard Crenna? Maybe Rambo's down there and they need to bring him back. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo. So, fun fact, Crenna and Weller had both worked with Cosmatos before this film. Weller was in the directors of Unknown Origin, while Crenna was in Rambo 2. Amanda pays. <laughs> I bet she does. Jesus, Daniel Stern. This is like the greatest 80s movie character actor cast ever assembled. Maybe all this time underwater is how Stern became a wet bandit. What? Ernie Hudson too? <laughs> Guess they're covered if they're ghosts down here. And the riches just keep rolling in. Here's venerable bee queen Meg Foster. Honestly, this movie might be too good for this show. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hector Elizondo too? Now you're just spoiling me. And best of all, creature effects from Stan Winston, baby. God, I miss Stan Winston. Screenplay by David Peoples and Jeb Stewart. Stewart worked on Die Hard. And with the credits over, we get a card telling us this is a really deep movie. 16,000 feet deep. So, interesting fact here. They did a lot of this film's underwater scenes as dry for wet, which means they created the illusion they were actually filming underwater, but in reality were on a dry sound stage. Oh yeah, these new mech suits are awesome! Man, don't really put a Starbucks anywhere these days. God, ATVs and nothing is on! And here's Peter Weller. Maybe he's gonna turn himself into Robocop right here. See? None of these scenes are actually underwater. However, when they did actually have to shoot in the water for the film, Stan Winston's team became certified divers to work in those sequences. Back inside, I'm not gonna lie. Weller's got a sweet podcast studio set up here. Hey, to Jesus? Nobody fucks with to Jesus. Well, I mean, I guess oxygen deprivation does, but nobody else. See all those computers? Less powerful than your smartwatch. Oh, I knew those big bean burritos were a bad idea before getting into this suit. Uh-oh, his check engine light is on. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to implode we go. Hey, who remembers the door code? Oh yeah, this is definitely the look of a man who's Dutch ovened himself in his own mech suit. Hi, just wanted to stop by and ask if you'd accepted Jesus as your lord and savior. And I guess now we'll recreate the meal scenes from Alien and Aliens. Anyway, this is one of those character scenes where we can learn Daniel Stern is an asshole. I know about implosion, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet you do. I bet you was imploding in your pants. <laughs> um, Peter, you're not supposed to look directly into the camera. Man, these guys are trapped underwater for like a three-month shift and they don't even get a Keurig. Don't worry, though. Things are about to get exciting as Hector Elizondo explains union regs and OSHA regulations to us. No bleeping way. We just pulled a full shift. You can't call shack duty on top of full shift. That's a union violation. It's in the contract. Oh, hey. 
hey, Richard Crenna finally decided to join the movie. Uh, good evening. Name's Thompson, party one. Man, is this a movie or an industrial video covering underwater mining regulations? Section 1412 of the Trioceanic Manual requires a mining shack's medical officer to be present in the control room. Look, I'm sorry I wasn't there. I had this whole Rambo thing to deal with. Underwater house establishing shot. USA! USA! Hey, she's making big daddies from Bioshock. This place may not have a great coffee maker, but it does have a state-of-the-art tanning bed at least. You ever wonder why doctors always have these anatomy drawings in the office? Is it like in case they forgot where something is? Ah, uh, yes, here's the issue, De Jesus. You have no brain. Anyway, in another part of the ship, they're cleaning up. Daniel Stern is checking out some cans. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that, you pervs. Whoa, mama. Oh great, we've got a face hugger on the ship. Someone get me Ellen Ripley and 20th Century Fox's lawyers on the phone. <laughs> well, okay, I guess that solves that problem. Short movie this week. Awesome, they get video drone down here. These early FaceTime calls weren't very good, were they? And here's Meg Foster doing her best Kirstie Alley cosplay. Foster is Martin, basically the Paul Reiser corporate shill from Aliens. I don't know about you guys, but I'm darting to think this movie is wasting my time. We've got movie sign! You don't got movie sign till I say you got movie sign, capiche? Daniel Stern doing his best to do cosplay, a uh, Jesus. Are we sure this isn't part of the Lebowski verse? Alright, let's watch him stick his rod in the hole on TV. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. This rod into the hole he drilled in a rock. Random science numbers. Man, they really do have the sweetest Twitch studio ever. Speaking of which, I'm on Twitch now. Go follow me over there. I'm the horror geek. And down goes Daniel Stern. Damn it, cable's out again. Did you forget to pay the bill? Must find and kill the little sisters. Reps for Jesus. Man, I think she just wandered into a live action underwater version of Sexy Magical Girl, judging by all these tentacles. For God's sakes, why doesn't Six Pack have his blinkers on? Oh, that's probably because he got the BMW mech suit. They never use the blinkers on those. Oh, look, she found a ship. This is just like Alien. We have fun. What? Leviathan. And title mention. You know what to do. I'm gonna say, for not being underwater, this is pretty convincing to me. They shot many of these scenes at Cinecita Studios in Italy. The Stan Winston team explained that working with the Italians was interesting primarily because of the language barrier. They had to drop pictures of things they needed since half of the crew couldn't really understand the other half. Yeah, sure, we got time for some Tetris. Let's say, I definitely feel like the Bioshock guys might have seen and loved this movie. <laughs> Remember when we were getting a big budget Bioshock movie? God, I wish that thing had happened. And here's some exposition about the ship. On active duty with Russian fleet in the Baltic Sea. <laughs> of course it's Russian. This was 1989. We still hated the commies. And jump scare. <laughs> oh, here's Daniel Stern. Turns out he's brought back treasure from the sunken ship. I'm sure that's not going to be an issue at all. Unfortunately, there's nothing good in there. Just a bunch of old credit card statements and tax returns. No, <laughs> wait, it's even worse. The sea stole. Huh. The last box is better. It has vodka. I mean, it's no JMB, but I guess it'll do. And here's a live look at Al Capone's vault after Geraldo opened it. You kids even remember Geraldo or Al Capone's vault? Christ, I'm old. Scarface Al Capone may have built it, and nobody knows what's in it. Some say money. Some say bodies. Workmen found plenty of dirt and rubble, but little of value. I expect you to find nothing. Wish we found nothing. Great, stuck a mile under the sea and all we get is Russian government TV on the satellite. The gist of all this jibber jabber is that the Russians are dead, but the captain is basically saying it's because some kind of tropical fever. <laughs> sure it is. And it gets worse because Richard Crenna has a theory about why the ship sank. I think that was a torpedo hit. I think that ship was sunk on purpose. Anyway, Weller's heard enough. All right, I'm out. I think Dale Stern needed some dental work done today. Gonna drill him good. The bad news is it's boring underwater for months at a time. 
The good news is they can entertain themselves with LJN's old Jaws game for the Nintendo. I feel like we spend a lot of time watching the movie on crappy tiny TV screens so far. We've got movie sign again! Sorry, it's just this place keeps making me think of the satellite of love for some reason. I said, open the pod bay doors, Hal! Peter Weller's a lot like me. Doesn't even notice when the chick is making it obvious she's totally into him. Underwater house establishing shot! Oh god, did you let Weller drill your teeth? I mean, it's no dentist. Hmm, the back knee says trend, but you should be way bigger if you're doing this much. Anyway, Weller wants to cut this trip short, but you know how management is. Any evacuation 24 hours before a scheduled pickup won't look good on an otherwise excellent record. I think when I get back topside, I'm gonna change up my life. Maybe become a cop. Meanwhile, the natives think Stern is just faking it. Contract says if we miss our quarter, they only gotta pay us half pay for the entire month. Bastard's definitely tanking on us. No, Cod. Show them how we like that line delivered Linda Day George. Bastard! Bastard! Hey, Ernie Hudson's show enough cosplay is off to a good start. But Weller's not gonna be outdone. Honestly, his needs a lot more work. Chills, body aches, fever. Looks like Stern's got the Rona. Today on Dr. Pimple Popper. So, I think I glossed over how Stern got sick. He snagged a flask of vodka from the sunken ship earlier, and apparently that's the cause of his illness. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. Um, we're gonna need a stronger microscope. We still can't find your dick with this one. Alright, I'm gonna go play some Tempest. Ooh, it's a PlayStation 1 tech demo. It can generate 80 polygons! Oh, so Krenna is gonna recreate the Wilford Brimley computer scene from the thing. Got it. Organism of unknown origin. No kidding. Tell me something I don't know. It's sweet we were so optimistic about tech in the 80s. We dreamt of a day where we could ask computers questions and they'd rationalize answers for us. Instead, we just got ChatGPT making up shit. Hey, that's my new band name! And so much for Daniel Stern. I guess the upside is they can bury him at sea pretty easily. Anyway, Weller's gonna check him out. Good thing he's got an N95. So, now we need to examine everyone to make sure they don't have cooties too. Oh my god, Hector, you have a severe case of dishpan hands. You're gonna need multiple doses of palm olive stat. Hey, have you seen a dermatologist about this mole? Look, I don't have time to do a Zoom meeting today. We got an outbreak happening here. Weller's seen enough and wants to get topside, but there's a complication. There's a hurricane 600 miles off the coast of Cuba, possibly coming your way. Oh yeah, Jim Cantori is probably already on the scene. Oh, and now Lisa Eilbacher is sick because she drank the vodka too. Well, that or it's morning sickness. I also feel like I forgot to mention in the opening credits that she was in Beverly Hills Cop. They help her to the infirmary where Ernie discovers that Stern is dead. Or is he? Been a crazy day. I've been pulling my hair out trying to get shit done. Anyway, now things are starting to get steamy. Hell yeah. No, I mean because Bowman's taking a shower. Hey, save some hot water for the rest of us, lady. And she's dead. Nicked herself with this lady shick and bled out. You hate to see it. Oh, hey, Daniel Stern is looking great. I mean, that's nothing a little Sky Rizzy can't fix. And it looks like he and Bowman are making the beast with two backs. Hell yeah. No, I mean they're merging. Hmm, so, guess that burial at sea is happening. I wonder if they should be moving mutated corpses with absolutely zero safety gear. I can at least get some gloves. Doesn't Hector Elizondo know some regulation about this? But before they can jettison this dead weight, there's a problem. I feel something too. Let's go! Somebody's alive in here. And he was not wrong. They do manage to jettison them, and that should be movie over, right? Well, not so fast. One of them got Hector. And an appendage survived. Man, this thing really gets around. Anyway, Krenna has a theory about why they were altering these Russians' genetics. If you were tampering with genetics, why stop with the base model? Homo aquaticus, a man who could live underwater. Think of the possibilities. So this is basically the Russian Captain America program. They were making super soldiers. And it gets worse, because this thing is still mutating. Man, Stan Winston's team really hit a home run here. Oh, and Krenna has more theories too. I better let the company know. Have you ever thought that they may suspect already? While they're packing up, Peter Weller finds the flask. Oh God, is nude hiding down here? And Meg Foster is thinking some deep thoughts. 
When Snoop Dogg turns 60, he'll be 420 in dog years. While she's getting blunted, De Jesus is looking for the butter. But all he finds is this jump scare. The top shelf was supposed to be where Grandma hides the cookies, not the alien sea slugs. Well, this is like a reverse chestburster. Hudson's like, man, Ghostbuster training didn't prepare me for this shit. It should be noted that in presumably yet another nod to Alien, Hudson's character name is Jones, aka Jonesy, which was the name of the cat in Alien. <laughs> I'm sure this is fine. Hudson goes for help, but they're too late. De Jesus is hulked out, apparently. That or the Kool-Aid man was just here. And this is the perfect time for a rolling brown out. And they're off to find Willie. Jones is really gripping his pole. Hell yeah. No, this actual pole. It's his weapon. And jump scare. Oh, it's your scar. I'm sorry. Guess she wanted to drop in unannounced. Now it's time for the weapons montage. Wait, they have a flamethrower? And another nod to the thing. You got the blood supply. Oh, and the blue girl. Word on the street is that this scene was a real drag for Hector. Don't worry though, Doc is here, and his diagnosis calls for amputation. But things are about to get way worse. It's growing. And I guess we might as well use up all the trend now. Gonna need the strength for the final showdown. So, with a hurricane up top keeping them trapped with the monster, they're basically gonna try to lure it to the escape hatch and blast it out into the ocean. <laughs> Again, kinda alien-esque. All right, let's go shoot this thing in the dick. Nice, something straight out of a Sutter Kane novel. Underwater house establishing shot. Now Doc's thinking some deep thoughts. If I get a job as security at a Samsung store, does that make me the guardian of the galaxy? Oh yeah, and Hector Elizondo is totally gonna turn into a monster. Let me have a look at that. Really itches. Yeah, it's because it's healing. Doc heads out for new bandages, but first he's got to stop and check his email. Sweet, a Nigerian prince wants to pay me to hold his money for him. I'm rich. Oh no, he's trapping them on the bottom of the sea. This is very Wilford Brimley in the thing. Ernie Hudson is like, whatever you do, don't cross the streams. Wait, wrong movie, sorry. And I told you Hector was going to turn. He's got a chest burster. That or he's in love and his heart is pounding out of his chest like a cartoon. My god, he's about to lock in the claw! Solid JR today. That one only slightly sucked. Oh man, teeth in your palm. Does that mean you basically eat shit every time you wipe? And Doc's looking great. Definitely should have skipped the double bean burrito. Weller and his team are gonna hit the escape bubbles. But surprise, they're gone. Oh no. We're trapped. The escape bubbles are gone. Now they've got some very aggressive Avon sales ladies at the door. This seems like a terrible time for a Zoom meeting with corporate. Then Ernie Hudson gets his great line. I realize he must have gone through hell. Gone? Bitch, we still here! Yeah, you tell her, Ernie. And I'm sure she's just making a phone call to get help down there faster, right? Or not. Looks like they're just gonna leave them down there. The stock of Trioceanic Corp took a bath on world markets today when news of a tragic mining accident was revealed to investors. A spokesperson revealed that the accident destroyed well. Gen 7 Atlantic Zone 10. But it gets even worse because now the base is gonna implode. Underwater house establishing shot. Wow, looks like Hudson's getting hosed. The clock's ticking on that implosion, but we've got time for another jump scare. <laughs> Are you a tentacle monster, or are you just happy to see me? This season on Ninja Warrior, looks like Willy is going down. Hell yeah. No, not like that. The tube is dropping her to the lower level. Now they've got Robocop in the rear naked chokehold. But it's okay, because Weller's got a foreign object. So, new plan. They're gonna get in the suits and blast to the surface. I'm no scientist, but this seems completely implausible. But here's Johnny. Just some really great creature effects here. I miss Stan Winston so damn much. And now it's just Robocop versus The Thing. God, how did we never get a Dark Horse Comics Robocop versus The Thing miniseries? And now it's getting hot in here. Weller is about to make his escape, but you know it can't be that easy, right? Oh! But the monster actually helps him. So long, sucker and gets its head crushed. Now it's time for an implosion and a rare actual underwater shot. 
Somehow they make it to the surface. Great, now they can drown, die of dehydration, or be eaten by sharks. Oh, and Robocop made it too! Oh, hey, here's a chopper. I'm not gonna lie, this might be the greatest deus ex machina chopper since demons. Just to make sure the chopper sees them, they use the Ric Flares. Oh god, here come the sharks! <laughs> I guess we can add Jaws ripoff to the list too now. But the sharks are the least of their worries. And it's got Ernie! Oh yeah, definitely a Jaws ripoff too. <laughs> and a little bit of Killer Crocodile. Man, this movie is perfect. And Exploding Monster. Damn, we lost Ernie. Well, the black guy was gonna make it this week. They land on this oil rig, which is basically like flying into another horror movie. God, the boss is here. Probably gonna give them a bad performance review for destroying their underwater facility. Weller's not putting up with that though, so he gives her a taste of his Bimfist. How do you feel? Better. A lot better. And cue credits. What? No swerve ending. So, what do we learn from Leviathan? Well, that you can rip off Alien, Aliens, The Thing, and throw on some nods to Jaws and still make one really entertaining film. This one deserves more love from the cult film community. It's really good. But enough about that. Can Leviathan mutate enough people into monsters to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Leviathan is solid. We're treated to plenty of slimy tentacles, chest bursters, a crushed head, mutated people, and plenty of awesome creature effects from Stan Winston. This one's not a splatter fest, but for a mainstream film, it's pretty gooey. As such, I'm happy to give Leviathan a very respectable three barf bag rating. This is a modestly sick little flick and very entertaining. Looking for another movie with mutated tentacle monsters? Then be sure to check out my review of In the Mouth of Madness. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.